So I wasn't planning to make a film about foraging right now, but I've just driven past this, so I thought I'd, uh, I'd stop and have a little look at it. Uh, this is John from Forage London and Beyond, and this is an unrehearsed, uh, unplanned little foraging film. This is thorn apple, otherwise known as known as loco weed, for its powerful, uh, hallucinogenic, and slightly maddening properties. It's a it's a member of the potato family, Solanaceae, and it's got what looks on it like kind of armoured kiwi fruit. And you see those in the middle. These are really quite small at the moment, but they can become quite big, sort of um, almost tennis ball sized. It's got these amazing white trumpety flowers on. Um, I don't see this very much at all. In fact, I think the last time I saw this was probably in Clissold Park in North London, but really probably only the second or third time I've ever seen this. But while we're here looking at this, we may as well look at a few other plants because I'm just going to kind of roadside cutting and there's so much stuff growing here. Down here, train going by there. I'll give it a second. Down here we've got some, uh, some fat hen, uh, a kind of wild spinach, basically a Neolithic wild spinach. Uh, looking very happy and very healthy and then growing over here absolutely tons of horseradish horseradish leaves leaves growing there obviously we're not really going to use the leaves although we could wrap fish up in them or something it would ideally be the root we're interested in and then down here there's a relative of the fat hen another type of wild spinach this is uh this is called good king henry it's in the goosefoot family uh, Good tasty plant, just sweat it and eat it like spinach. And then behind it, you can see this plant with these amazing little heart shaped seed heads on it. This is Shepherd's Purse, a cressy, peppery little member of the cabbage family, a little brassica there. What else is going on here? Just absolutely masses of stuff growing here, to be honest. Um, we've got some uh, mugwort growing down here nice aromatic member of the daisy family use it for brewing use it for making vermouth use it as a flavor enhancer all sorts of other things over the back here some uh, white dead nettle so they look like stinging nettles but they're actually a member of the mint family so they've got square stems opposite opposing leaves, no stings on them, and these lovely little white flowers which taste a little bit sweet and also a little bit like mushroom. What else have we got going down here? We've got another type of aura, because there's another type of spinach. Um, these plants, plants like this, plants like stinging nettles, plants like woody nightshade, things like that, um, uh, black nightshade as well, they like nitrogen rich soils, and those are the sort of places they tend to thrive. Um, so this is probably a fig leaved orac or something similar, but basically another wild spinach. Tons of nettles. This is common mallow, a relative of marshmallow, very nice, very tasty. You can probably, not, you know, not from a roadside, it's not an ideal place to pick any of these things, it's just a good place to identify them. But you can uh, just pick these leaves and just sweat these like a vegetable. You can make a, a traditional Middle Eastern soup from them called a molochaya. I've absolutely no idea of my pronunciation. Well, I could be certain my pronunciation's wrong, but I can't tell you exactly what the pronunciation is. Down here, you've got another little member of the cabbage family starting to come through. That's going to be a swine cress, I imagine. I think that'll be a swine cress, or that might be another shepherd's purse. Either way, good thing with foraging. If you're not sure, wait a week or two. Plant will have grown a bit. There'll be a bit more information on show, so there'll be more to see. Uh, this is black nightshade, a relative of deadly nightshade, but uh, often eaten, this plant, but it has varying degrees of solanine in it. So that's the green stuff. Stuff makes potatoes green. And um, it's an acid and it can be poisonous. I've made curry from these leaves, um, but I can't recommend that you do so. Um, in, in parts of southern India, this is actually grown, it's a cultivated vegetable, but like I say, the, 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 the level of what can be toxic in it <laughs> varies quite a lot. What else is going on in here? I can see some other interesting plants that aren't necessarily edible, but that might have medicinal uses. Hemp agrimony growing in there. 
and uh, ow, just walked into a load of stinging nettles. Um, uh, what else is growing along here? Lots of spurge, uh, euphorbia, which isn't edible at all. In fact, it's got some quite burning, dangerous uh, sap in the stems, so that needs to be avoided as well. This is a relative of the dock family. Uh, what's that? Probably red shang or one of the persicaria. Couldn't be completely certain, just at a glance. Um, lots and lots of things growing here. Over the road I can see some little yellow brassica flowers growing here, which means another sort of cabbagey plant. This looks to me like um, perhaps hoary mustard or maybe white mustard. I'm not sure. Uh, be pretty easy to identify just have to look at the leaf shape and things like that look at the shape of the seed heads as well but you know with foraging I'm, I'm really looking at clumping things together rather than separating them so I know that when I'm in the cabbage family everything is safe to eat even though a few things might taste a bit like shit um, this is some yarrow here this is a member of the uh, daisy family doing a bit of an impression of of a member of the carrot family so it looks like it's got umbella for flowers like, like you get on members of the carrot family but they're actually separate and branching and it looks like it's got carrot foliage it's quite feathery but actually it's not it's a lovely aromatic plant this time of the year it's become quite strong and quite bitter and I would use it perhaps more as a sort of herbal remedy a herbal first aid than anything um, but uh, earlier on in the year it's, it's perhaps more of, a, of an edible plant. There's absolutely loads to see here. Anyway, this was a sort of impromptu uh, stop just as I whizzed down the road and I was, uh, my, my um, botany nerd bit of me was, was seduced by the sight of something that I didn't often see, the thorn apple. And, um, but basically it just goes to show that if you've got your green vision turned on you are, we are, I am surrounded by nature even in places where it might seem unlikely and where things might not seem uh, of interest there's always something to look at there's always something to interest foragers people often ask me how often I go foraging and I say I'm in a, I'm in a permanent state of foraging which I most definitely am. Anyway, I'm going to bring this to an end. Wow, it's only seven minutes. This is the shortest film I've ever made. Uh, just having a look at this thorn apple again. Thank you for your patience and your tolerance and for listening to my waffly freeform rants.